Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk all about painting red hair. Well, let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So I'm painting up this really awesome fig of this druid for my wife. So it's a gift for her. And uh, I'm painting this scene in nature. It's going to have lots of natural colors. And I thought what a great chance to paint some red hair. So here in this video, I'm going to take you through sort of the steps, the tricks, and the pitfalls of painting red hair. Red is often one of the most challenging colors to work with. It's very transparent, uh, and so as a result, it can be very difficult to get convincing red hair. Highlights often look too pink or too orange. Shadows often look too messy. So we're going to show you how using uh, some very simple colors, some spread of red, that you can make something that is convincing while still capturing the light and showing all the necessary contrast we would expect in hair. Let's head over to the desk and let's start painting. All right, let's uh, talk about paint. So first off, I've got a selection of reds here. I've got a deep hull red, uh, a darker, a little more brown infused red, and then I have both the red and tuladine red. Basically the two very bright reds are pure pigment. One is PR170, one is PR3. They're both just intense reds. Now our shadow is going to be created with anthracite, but any panes gray or blue will work. And our highlight is going to be dark warm flesh. Uh, this is out of the Pro Acryl Signature Series from myself and John. Uh, the Generally those kinds of like flesh tones are going to work really well as highlights for red. They're rich, they're warm, they're a yellow orange, um, but there's a little bit of peachiness to it that'll make it nice. Uh, so you'll see when we get there. Now, apparently this figure is going to San Francisco uh, because of all these freaking flowers in her hair, which ends up being very annoying for this painting process, but it's fine. We're going to start by just establishing a nice base coat, and I do basically two thin layers here of this uh, whole red. I want to make sure that they, all of the hair, any black from the primer or, you know, if you think, even, even if you're doing a zenithal undercoat, you want a nice even tone of this all the way through. So there we go. Now I'm going to build in some soft shadows. So this is whole red in the anthracite and it's in there as a glaze, it's quite thin. Like I'm not, I'm not working with it strongly. This is one of the few times I'm gonna want this to flow into the shadows. And I'm gonna to try to match the shadows on her figure, but effectively nothing that's facing directly upward should have any of this shadow color in it, okay? So only the parts that are either down or facing, you know, like facing directly down. Remember, in our uh, highlight colors, we, uh, our darkest color that's there, our shade tone in our highlight areas is our midtone. And as I'm applying these initial steps, I'm really just going for, I'm using a big fat brush. This is like a size eight or something crazy. And I'm really just trying to establish these bands of light. Where are the values? Where is the light going to fall? And hair has this sort of specular highlight to it, meaning it'll reflect to the viewer's eyes. It also has sort of a halo effect of to it. As always, if you're not sure how to highlight hair, um, just do a Google search for hair dye bottles, like the pictures on the front of hair dye bottles. Those are all Photoshop perfect and will give you the exact placement of your light. Now the jump here between the burnt red and the, uh, or, or up to the next color is gonna seem very strong, but this brings me to one of the challenges of red, which is as you're working with the reds, you look how much darker that looks after it's dried. Red goes on super bright and super intense and looks really, really red when it's first on there. But as it dries and mats out, it's very transparent, so it shows the colors underneath. That's okay. We can use that to our advantage in this process because it'll help us create nice smooth transitions, but it means we really want to let it dry in between each application. But these first applications are just big layers in areas to establish the values, just shingles on a roof. Nothing complicated. We're just each time covering less and less space. Now with red hair, the part that always throws everybody, uh, which is we need to establish a really bright tone to create our halo 
of light and those little light catches. This is where the dark warm flesh comes in. In this initial application, it's not mixed. This is pure dark warm flesh. And all I'm doing, this is my highest highlight color. All I'm doing is placing it everywhere I want there to be a highlight. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do two applications of this, but the second one, I don't cover everything that I covered on the first one. It will be fairly transparent, and so as it dries, some of the red will come through, and that will work to our advantage. So with my second application, I actually cover less, just pushing toward the areas that I want very, very highlighted, okay? Now that's gonna look stark and insane, but trust me. Now, as we then go to the next step, I'm gonna work with this uh, Tuladine Red, uh, and it's going to be a thin glaze consistency, but not super thin. And I'm going to just cover over everything, every all of the, uh, I'm gonna cover over all of the highlight to mid-tone areas. So beyond where I placed the flesh, but not down into the shadows. And you'll notice it has an immediate and punchy effect on that red, creating a sort of highlight area right away, making it look rich and warm and vibrant like she's in sunlight. That undertoning coming through gives us that powerful highlight punch that we want when we're dealing with red hair. After everything dries, here it is. Now, if I was working on a just an army figure, honestly, this step, you can just stop. Like, you're good here. This would be fine for an army figure. But as this is a little more display oriented, we're gonna go farther. Remember, the important thing about this is you wanna set the values first. So I'm not worried about blends. I'm not worried about anything like that. The first step is just getting those lights in place. The other important thing here, and I can't highlight this enough, is that in the highlight areas, our mid-tone is our shadow. In the shadow areas, our mid-tone is our highlight, right? So basically, we don't want to have the deepest shadows up on the top of the head where it's facing up toward the light, nor do we want to have the brightest colors down in the shadows where there's basically no light reflecting. All right, how do we go farther and take this paint job? Now we get out the thin brush and now becomes the time of lines. The rest of these steps are not complicated. It's just time consuming. So here you can see I'm working with basically a mix in the shadow colors, but I'm gonna work with a lot of half steps and all those half steps are just gonna be lots of little thin lines. And I'm gonna extend those in to the areas to bridge the two colors. So for example, here, I'm tracing a lot of them over the shadow area up into where that red starts. Um, this will help bridge those two colors. The hair, we don't want red hair to actually be dark blue, but dark blue is a nice cold shadow for the warm red hair. And so I just keep uh, bringing it down in the method of thin lines, trying to show the individual strands, the texture, of it, while at the same time smoothing my blends basically through creating just hundreds and thousands of little thin lines. As I move up the spectrum into my higher midtone, so too do I move up the placement of my layer lines. Now I'm going to start working, you know, higher up. And if you've got a particularly deep ridge, like you see those couple ridges that are creating really strong shadows on her head. You can then push a little higher up into your highlight areas with this stuff, but you, you want this banding of light to occur. So it's not a flat, even line. Instead, it's traveling like a band over the particular areas, but you want it to be uneven, staccato, right? So it looks like a, a volume in an, the volume in an audio recording, okay? Where it's lots of thin lines that are bouncing up and down in exact uh, length but I'm just using these thin lines over and over again, covering in between the two areas where those paints are. So if I mix two paints together, then that layer line has to extend into both sides, right? So if I use burnt red plus the uh, tuladine red, then wherever those two colors were, that's the space I'm gonna cover with those lines, but not in a completely even fashion. I will alter the length of all of my strikes on the miniature. 
As I move up into my highest highlights, now I'm pushing actually slightly above what would technically be registering on this figure. And um, this is where most of the action is. The shadow colors with red are pretty easy. Because everything is so naturally transparent and dries out very transparently, your low colors, your mid to shadows, will all blend really smoothly. The highlights where we start adding the flesh, you have to walk this very careful balance. A little too much, and it starts to feel weird and false and not credible. Not enough, and you don't get that highlight there. But red hair will turn either like orange or pink or, or peach in the highlights. It just depends on the sort of underlying base color. Here we're going for sort of um, real stark Irish red hair, right? So as we continue to move up, I'm getting thinner and thinner and thinner with my strikes in these highlights. But you'll notice, again, not all of these lines are the same length. We need real and true variants. Some are quite thin, some are quite long. It extends up and down across that specular uh, band of light that I want to create. And I'm just slowly integrating more dark warm flesh in there uh, to, to sort of branch out that highlight. And then what I'm going to do is just then take some of that very thin uh, Tuladine uh, red and glaze it back over one more time. And by the way, if you're working on like a real display figure, you might do this three times, five times, ten times, where you just keep slowly building and shrinking and building and shrinking and building and shrinking until you get up into this really smooth, fine, um, specular band of light. One important note here, this tuladine red is very thin, which means as I'm working in these very thin lines, it will somewhat run down into the recesses. That's actually an advantage here at the highest highlight because that will act as the mid-tone effectively for those uh, high highlight colors, but that's going to be my deepest shadow. I don't want anything up in the highlight area to be darker than effectively that red. Now here I am back again with a little mix, but still with a lot of that dark warm flesh and just reinforcing but shrinking that band of light. So every time we cover a little less and then we glaze and then we cover a little less and then we glaze. And you'll notice I'm not just hitting that band, but also the part in the center of her hair. I'm also hitting the lower areas, pushing those highlights to remember the tops and the sticky outy bits every time there's a volume change. So where, uh, where it comes out from under one of these flowers and it pushes back out and becomes a sticky outy bit. And so we have both the top of a volume and something sticking out. Then we're pushing a highlight there. These last steps are all just refinement, more thin lines, more slight adjustments of the color, making sure that my bands of light extend completely across that entire area where they're hitting. So you can see here she has a highlight at the top, in the middle where it sticks out over her shoulders, and at the bottom where it sticks out over her butt. And those are our three bands of light. Now it's just refinement. And there she is. That's how the hair looks. I thought I'd do this as a video here so you could actually see where she's at. Uh, and this is where it is. Now, still a lot more work to do on this figure. Uh, but of course, you can see how all those highlights are registering across the surface. I really like how this came out. I hope you do too. There you go. The hair is all finished. I've still got a lot more work to do on this figure. Uh, but She's coming along nicely, and I think the hair turned out okay. If you liked this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions on this or any other topic uh, that I didn't answer, drop those down below. I always answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, uh, there is a Patreon link down below focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.